Hi everyone. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, welcome to this number fun nugget. I love subtraction, Dave. <laughs> you do? I love subtraction as well, actually. It's one of my favourite topics to talk about. What are we going to do today? <laughs> We're going to do column subtraction, actually. We can really get our brains around that. Oh, look stupid, Dave. <laughs> I know. I just love it. I love my glasses. Hate the wig. <laughs> love your glasses and hate the wig. Oh, well. Well, hope to th- hopefully today will be helpful for you. We're going to try and look at and get our brain around column subtraction. And Ailey, are you ready for your rhyme? Yeah, I'm ready for my rhyme. Where's your rhyme then? Here it is. What's the story? What does it look like? What do I need to know? What can we reason? What's the challenge? The wig has to go, Dave. It has to go. <laughs> the wig doesn't have to go. It looks quite cool. Oh, you know, I hate it, Dave. <laughs> it's not the wig it has to go. It's basically wait before you go. Because right at the very end, I'm going to give you a challenge and then give you a few moments to get your brain around it, see if you can solve the challenge. And then wait before you go. After you've paused the video and had a go at it, you can watch that bit and we'll give you the solutions. Indeed, we will, Dave. This wig has got to go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how long it stays on the back of your head. Look, it's daft. <laughs> oh, it's gone. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> it has gone. Right, here we go, Ailey. Part What's, the sto- What's the story? Should we do that again? Part one. What's the story? What's the story, Dave? Well, actually, I'm asking you with the story, Ailey. I've got 834 to so track 648. What's the story? Well, it's like this, Dave. I've got 834 brain cells, <laughs> have you? Yeah. <laughs> and you've got 648, <laughs> right? So how, how many more brain cells have I got than you? <laughs> I see. So you've got 834 brain cells and I've got 648. Yeah, I've got more than you. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I, that's one story. So you're, you're comparing the amount of brain cells then? Yeah. Well, I've got a different type of story. My story is about one of my number fun characters. And one of my number fun characters is called Papa Tishning. And Papa Tishning is a, is a lumberjack and he chops up logs and he puts them in crates of 100, like this. He's got big stacks of 10, like these are big stacks of 10. And he puts some of them in loose logs, little ones like this. So I'm thinking Papa Tishning has got 800 big crates of 100. Yeah. Three stacks of ten. All right. And he's got four loose logs. Four <laughs> loose logs. That's right. So if I put them all together like that, that's the number. That's all the logs he's got. 834 logs. And then along comes somebody like you, Ailey, and says, please, can I have 648 logs? That's quite a good impression, though. <laughs> all right. So you, you come along. What are you going to say? Please, can I have 648 logs? Right. And then... Uh, you have to take 648 away from that. Oh, it's like reduction, Dave. That's right. So your story is you're comparing the numbers to find the difference. And what I'm doing is I'm removing the 648 from the 834 in my story. Part two. What does it look like? Well, the thing is, I think if we're going to really understand column subtraction, what we need to do is to think, what's the story? We've done that, Dave. (laughs) And what does it look like? And then maybe even play with some models and images and pictures like these ones to make it really understandable. Okay, so I've got a song to help. Here it is. Peppa T, there's a lot of logs in your house today. Sure is, darling. And I've written a song about it. (laughs) I got crates of a hundred. I got big stacks of ten. I got loose logs lying on the floor My house is full of bursting I've got all that I can fit in 834 Peppa T, please can my daddy have 648 logs? Okay darling, here we go I've got four loose logs You need eight Let's regroup a stack of ten Two stacks left Of the fourteen loose logs Here's your eight That's six loose logs Six loose logs for Bubber Tay <laughs> I just love subtraction <laughs> I got two stacks of ten left You need four Let's regroup a hundred crates Seven crates left Of the twelve stacks of ten Here's your four That's eight stacks of ten Eight stacks of ten For Bubber Tay Oh, I just love regrouping I got 
got 700 crates You need six We just don't need to regroup Not this time Of the 700 crates Here's your six That's 100 crate 100 crate for Bubber Tea Here's your dad's 648 logs, darling But you've only got 186 left Not for long And I've got crates of 100 i got big stacks of 10 i got loose logs lying on the floor my house is full of bursting I've got all that I can fit in 834 Well, happy Papa T Please could my granny have 356 logs? Sure thing, I can do that i got four loose logs You need six Let's regroup a stack of ten Two stacks left Of the 14 loose logs Here's your six. That's eight loose logs. Eight loose logs for Pupper T. I got two stacks of ten left. You need five. Let's regroup a hundred crates. Seven crates left. Of the twelve stacks of ten. Here's your five. That's seven stacks of ten. Seven stacks. Of ten for Bumper T. I love stacks of ten. <laughs> I've got seven hundred crates. You need three. We just don't need to regroup. Not this time. Of the seven hundred crates, here's your three. That's four hundred crates. Four hundred crates for Bumper T. Here's your granny's three hundred and fifty-six logs. But you've only got 478 left. Not for long. <laughs> I got crates of a hundred. I got big stacks of ten. I got loose logs lying on the floor. My house is full of bursting. I got all that I can fit in. 834. Mine too. Oh, now you're making me blush. Part three. What do I need to know? What do you need to know? Well, that was really cool. Did you like that? I loved it, Dave. I love a story and I love the pictures. And I think the story and the pictures really help, don't they? The thing is, when you do subtraction, sometimes you'll hear, or column subtraction I'm talking about now, like we did in that story, we'll hear sometimes people using the, the vocabulary of borrow, sometimes exchange, and sometimes regrouping. So which one do you think is the uh, best word to use? I haven't got a clue, Dave. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Well, the thing is, I'll try and explain here why I went for the word regrouping. So here's my little explanation. We've just seen puppetitioning story, and I think the story is really helpful because it helps us understand what's going on in subtraction. Let's check out some vocabulary. The vocabulary for subtraction uses these words, minuend, subtrahend, and difference. We can read it like this. The minuend subtract the subtrahend equals the difference. So when we're doing subtraction, we're finding the difference between two numbers or quantities. So the calculation we did in the first verse of Puppetitioning Song was this one. 834 subtract 648. Now what I want to talk about is the language. What language should we use? Borrow, exchange and regroup are three words that are actually used within this context of column subtraction sometimes. But which one is the best? Which one is preferable over the others? So let's have a bit of a think using puppetitioning story. I've got here some base 10 equipment. So these are puppetitioning's crate of 100 logs. These are big stacks of 10 and these are the loose logs. This is going to be puppetitioning's truck. So let's go back to our calculation. What do we do? Well, we've seen in the story he had four loose logs, but he was asked for eight of them. Well, as you do remember, he had four loose logs. He hasn't got enough to give eight. So what does he have to do? Well, what he does is this. He basically repackages. 
his, crate, his stack of 10 into 10 loose logs because his logs are packaged into loose logs, stacks of 10 and crates of 100. So he takes one of those stacks of 10 and just basically unpacks it. So that we then see two 10s and 14 loose logs. So which word is going to be best here? So borrow. Has Papa Titianing done any borrowing? Well, the answer is no. And borrow, borrow sort of implies I'm going to give it back. So I'm not sure that's the best option. Have we done some exchanging? Well, we certainly have here because I exchanged a stack of 10, if you like, for 10 ones with the resource I physically had to do in exchange. So that works. But in puppetitioning story, it reveals what's really going on when you're doing subtraction. Because he didn't do any exchanging. All he did was he regrouped one 10 into 10 ones. He actually just unpackaged it. He didn't take a stack of 10 all out of his yard and come back with 10 loose logs. He just regrouped it. So actually, regroup probably is preferable. And what we're seeing here is that 834 is 800s, two tens, and 14 ones. Because we have the 14 ones, we need eight ones. So let's put eight in the truck, and we have six ones left. He's got two stacks of 10. He needs to put four stacks of 10 on his truck to be able to give away. So what's he gonna do? Well, I'm gonna physically exchange a crate of 100 for 10 stacks of 10. I'm not doing any borrowing. I'm physically exchanging with my resource here. But what did puppetitioning do? Well, he basically just regrouped one of his 100 crates into 10 stacks of 10. So regroup is what he did. And so we have 12 stacks of 10, so trap four. That leaves him with eight stacks of 10, seven crates of 100, six go on the truck, leaving him 100 crate. So in the song, if you spotted, I didn't use the word borrow, I didn't use the word exchange, I used the word regroup, because that's what puppetitioning did. And in the end, he regrouped 834 into 700, 120, 14. Well, that makes a lot of sense, Dave. <laughs> so which one would you go for now? Regroup. That's right. That's the one we tend to use when we're mustering subtraction. Regrouping. <laughs> Absolutely regrouping. Uh, although you will do a physical exchange with the resources. What's next, Dave? Well, this is what's next. <laughs> What can we reason? So now we've got an understanding of a story and a picture behind it. I'm thinking, how, what, what can we reason? So I'm thinking, if I had 144 to track 68, I could then tell a story, couldn't I? I've got 144 logs, puppetitioning has, needs 68. What do I do? Well, I have to exchange a 10 into 10 loose logs. I've now got 14 loose logs. I can remove eight of those and put those on the truck. And puppetitioning would have six loose logs left. He's got three stacks of 10. Six need to be given away. So what's he going to do? Regroup, Dave. That's right. So he's going to regroup his 100 into 10 stacks of 10. He's now got 13 10s. He's going to put six of those 10s on the truck to take away. How many has he got left? Seven. <laughs> right, brilliant. So he's got 76 left. So in that story, there are 144 logs in the warehouse, 68 go on the truck to go, and I've got seven stacks of 10 and six loose logs left in the warehouse. I love it, Dave. So the other thing we can do is if we have 144 to track 68, I want to encourage you about this, Ailey, is that you don't have to solve it like that. Oh, so there's another way. There is, in fact, there's loads of ways. So here's a strategy we've called quad jump. So here, this is a bit like your brain cells. Oh, I've got 144 and you got 68. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you start with the number of brain cells I've got, 68. And then you count on to 70. That's two. Yep. Then you jump on to 100. 30 more. Then you jump on to 140. Another 40 more. That's right. And then another four to get to 144. That's right. So if you add those jumps up, you get 76. Oh, I see, Dave. It's like a count on strategy. It is. It's finding the difference that way. Here's another way of doing it. 144 subtract 68. You can partition 68 into 64 and 4. Why would you do that, Dave? Well, 
If I do 64, it just makes it easy to do 144 subtract 64, because really I'm just doing 14 tens subtract 6 tens. 8 tens, that's right. So you end up with 8 tens, I've got 80. Then you can subtract the 4 off. So 80 subtract 4, 76, that's right. So I'm partitioning, I'm, I'm partitioning the one subtraction into two little ones to help me. I really like this one. What on earth are you doing here? <laughs> well, well, you remember the answer in the subtraction calculation is called the difference? Yeah. All I'm doing is I'm just keeping the difference the same by adding to both my minuend and my subtrahend. So if I give 2 to both those numbers, it makes 144 subtract 68 into 146 subtract 70. Oh, 70 is a bit easier to subtract. It certainly is. So you're then saying, well, I've got 14 tens to subtract 7 tens, which gives us 7 tens, and I've still got the 6, 76. Well, that is really clever, Dave. So we've got a story, we've got pictures, and we've got alternative strategies. So here's the next bit. Part five, what's the challenge? Well, we're going to challenge you to do this. Challenge one. Can you solve the calculation 144 subtract 87 using column subtraction and puppetitioning story? <laughs> That's right. So think about the story. Think about the pictures. Can you retell that story uh, of that calculation as you do the column subtraction? Challenge two, Dave. Come up with three other ways of finding the difference between 144 and 87. That's right. Well, I showed you three strategies a, a few moments ago of other ways that I might do it. So I wonder what would you do. Oh, Dave, that's really clever. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, we've got a set of notes about this um, this session up there in the Nuggets bit on there. I also want to encourage you that you can go onto the Number Fun portal and you'll find loads of stuff about common subtractions. So here's Puppetitioning Subtraction Story. There's a parent downloadable pack here which gives parents and children lots of information and ideas about how to do subtraction really, really well. And it's got, oh, there's a place value grid like the one I had a few minutes ago, oh, puppetitioning's truck, and there's just some game and activity ideas based on common subtraction. Oh, I love it, Dave. Well, I love it as well. In fact, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do very soon is put two more additional different versions of puppetitioning subtraction song onto the portal because I want it to be an easier version, a medium version, and a harder version because it's su it's such a crucial thing for us to learn. So what's going to happen in a moment, we're going to put those reasoning challenges back on, give you a few minutes to have a think about it and a, maybe a chat if you've got someone to talk to about it and reason, and then we'll come back with uh, the wig has to go, Dave. <laughs> no, wait before you go. All right, then. All right, then. So here we go. Here's your challenge for today. Can I tell the story, Dave? No, because that's their job. Oh. I've got more brain cells than you. <laughs> you probably have. Part six. Wait before you go. The wig has got to go, Dave. <laughs> the wig's gone. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how did you get on? Well, did you manage to tell the story? 144 strat 87. Here's my version. I need 87 logs. And then puppetitioning goes. So he's got 144 logs. He needs 87. He's got four loose logs. What's he going to do? Regroup a stack of 10. So he's got 14 loose logs now. And he's going to put seven of those on his truck. So he's got three stacks of 10 left. It's not enough, Dave. No, because he needs eight stacks of 10, doesn't he? So he's going to regroup the 100 crate, Dave. Absolutely. So the 100 crate is going to be regrouped into stacks of 10. Now I've got 13 stacks of 10, which means he can put eight onto the truck. And he ends up with how many left in his warehouse? 57. 57. Oh, I love it. So he's, uh, he's going to take them away. Oh, I love column subtraction, Dave. So here is the solutions to challenge two. We've got three uh, strategies at the bottom, Dave. That's right. We've got our brain cells one. <laughs> no, it's quad jump. Well, it should be called brain cells. Oh, OK. Well, you start with the number of brain cells that I've got, 87. Then you jump to next 10 or to 100. You could do that, combine some of these jumps. Um, but you see, if adding three, adding 10, add 40, add four, 57. And then the, 100, the middle one, part whole one, 144 subtract 87. I've partitioned 87 into 84 and three. That's right. So I've found the difference between 144 and 84 to start with. 60. And then subtracted three more. 57. Brilliant. And the last one. Have you seen what I've done with the last one? Uh, you've been a bit clever, Dave. <laughs> well, the thing is, I know my bonds to 100. And 87 is not far from 100. So I thought, why don't I just increase 87 by 13 as my subject and, and, 
and as long as I increase my menu M by 13 as well, it'll be the same difference. So 157 subtract 100 is definitely a lot easier than doing 144 subtract 87. You are a very clever man, Dave. <laughs> no, all I'm doing is just using my strategies. I think they're just so cool. I hope that's helpful, everyone. All those images that we've seen of those different strategies come from our visual calculation policy and we've got a full extensive one that is used in lots of schools up and down the country so if you spot that and you're interested in it and you're a teacher and then please let us know because we've got a full extensive policy all based on oodles of strategies both the written and the mental as well as the concrete and pictorial resources that go alongside them it's time to go dave <laughs> it certainly is time to go so bless you we'll see you soon uh, we'll be back very soon and you've enjoyed today I love subtraction, Dave. It's the best ever. It is. I've been studying about it. You what? Using your brain cells? You haven't got many. <laughs> no. But I have been learning about subtraction. Amazing.